In the previous video, we looked at the characterization of extreme points of polyhedra in standard form. To recall, in order to enumerate all the extreme points of P, all we need to do is do as follows. We pick at most m linear independent columns of A, and let J denote the indices that correspond to those columns, and solve the system here, Ax equal to Bx, J equal to 0, where J is not in capital J. Then this, of course, is going to have a unique solution, and if that solution has non-negative components, it must be an extreme point. And we saw that every extreme point arises this way. So for every extreme point, you can always pick such a J. Now, the thing is, we don't really have to go through all possible cardinalities less than equal to m. In fact, we can focus on subsets of indices that have cardinality exactly m. And the reason is as follows. Suppose that this is strictly less than m. All we know is there exists another subset of indices disjoint from j with cardinality m minus the cardinal of j such that aj union j prime has linearly independent columns. So the result that we're using is if you have a matrix with rank m, that means you can find m linear independent columns. And if you start with a set of columns that has fewer than m elements, you can extend that by picking columns from your matrix to give you a set of m columns that are linearly independent. From this, we can say that this system here is equivalent to this system here. So the solution given by this system over here is going to be the same solution x star that you get from this system over here. And so what this is saying is you no longer have to look at subsets j that has less than m elements. You can focus on all m subsets of the index set of the variables. And this needs to the following two definitions. So if b is a subset of 1 up to n with cardinality m and the submatrix formed from columns of A indexed by elements in B has linearly independent columns then B is said to be a basis of A and the unique solution x star to the following system ax equal to b xj equal to 0 with j not in b is called a basic solution to the system ax equal to b determined by b and if it happens that x star is non-negative then x star is a basic feasible solution to the system ax equal to b x greater than or equal to zero so those are the new notions that we are introducing in this video the notion of a basis of a matrix a a basic solution determined by the basis and a basic feasible solution determined by a basis so let's look at a quick example is x star equal to 1, 1, 1, a basic feasible solution to this system? Well, to determine a basic feasible solution, we need to find a b that determines it. But we know that in this case, the basis b, so let go, let's go back here. The basis b has to have cardinality equal to the number of rows in a. And so, there can be at most two non-zero components in x star in whatever is determined by b. So this cannot be, since x star has greater than two non-zero components, no basis can determine x star as a BFS.
what about the following x star equal to 2 0 0 well it turns out that there are two choices for the basis b you can take b equal to 1 2 or b equal to 1 3 when b equal to 1 2 you first set x3 to 0 and solve when x3 is equal to 0 and you solve the system the system that you're looking at is x1 plus x2 equal to 2 and x1 equal to 2 and that gives you that the solution determined by b is 2 0 0 now if b is 1 3 then you are setting x2 to 0 and so you are looking at x1 equal to 2 and x1 plus x2 equal to 2 and again if you solve this you get the basic feasible solution 2 0 0 so we have a solution that is a basic feasible solution but there is more than one basis that determines it and that is possible that can happen so in general there is no one-to-one -one correspondence between bases and basic feasible solutions this is something that we have to keep in mind the fact that this happens can cause problems in the simplex method which we'll consider later on